you know, I always encourage people to download my videos, share my videos. I don't mind if you make money, like advertising, etc. That's not, not the problem for me. Yes, my friend, you are a Muslim? Yes, I must be good to a Christian prince. Yes, I am a Christian prince. How, how we know that you are a Muslim? Can you confirm to us that you are a Muslim? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's wonderful, my friend. So what do you think about what we are saying about all those history mistakes and errors in the Quran? Uh, well, to be honest, I, I don't necessarily like to... Um, because you said, as an example, the wife of Pharaoh um, was Asia, and, and this is true. It is mentioned in our narration okay. that this is the case, so I'm not going to lie about that. But the brother, uh, I, I don't know who you're referring to, who said that um, Pharaoh has been discovered to be Ramsey II. Um, I, I, I don't uh, agree with this. Notion. Well, you can see the videos. Uh, people, they can remind rem all, all of them. Mimi Hijab, he said that uh, all of them, all those YouTubers. Who, who, who's him. Mimi Hijab? Sorry, who Mimi is Hijab. This? He is the guy who uh, you, you know him. The guy who take off his clothes in front of the Chinese embassy. You don't know him? No. Okay. No, well, he's he, he like to strip to protest for pro state. But anyway, so as long as you are a Muslim, uh, you don't want to make any comment about those errors in the Quran. Uh, well, I only heard you talk about uh, th this part uh, at the moment. Uh, I, I wanted to actually ask you something, because um, mm. I've seen a few of your videos. Um, hey, can, you know, can you keep yeah. uh, your mouth closed from the microphone, because for some reason I'm losing your voice. Uh, give me one second, sorry. Right. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better. Go ahead. Okay. Um, could you give me, uh, let's say, either Quran, maybe let's say, let's stick with the Quran, and maybe you can use some authentic hadith right. on why you think the prophet was either, you know, a false prophet or a liar. Okay, let us first discuss what the word prophet mean. What prophet mm -hmm. mean? I, I guess the better word to use is uh, messenger of God, but uh, prophet means someone who prophesies all right something so is he a prophet people. or a messenger is he's a messenger of god he's not a prophet you see then you're going to ask me what what prophecies has he made no no no. Um, you see come true. so you are you are denying now he's a prophet because you're afraid i'm going to ask you what prophecies he made so now he, he's a prophet okay is he a prophet or not he is yes okay tell me the prophecy he made Okay, um, you mean that has come to pass or are going to come to pass? My friend, like prophecy is a prophecy. When you try to prove to me, you know, first of all, by the way, I welcome you. You sound like a nice guy. So you are welcome. Always, we welcome Muslims who they are really polite to join us and we would treat you very nice, the same as you treat us. So you are welcome. My friend, help me. When you say a prophecy, that's mean he said something and it's confirmed. So obviously something came to pass. Okay, um, are you familiar with Surat al-Rum? Okay, let's go to Surat al-Rum. What about it? <clears throat> if if I'm correct with my understanding, and, and I could be corrected here. Yeah. Um, this verse was... No, sorry, I, I got a better example for you. Um, no, let's, the... go, let's go to verse 1 first. Let's just finish it. Okay, if, if, I'm, if my understanding is correct, and there are some hadiths that uh, suggest this, I, I don't know them by memory, but um, <clears throat> it was revealed at the time of the Battle of the Trench, where the Muslims were surrounded by the Mushrikeens. Mm. And it was, there's a few hadiths as well along the lines, but mm. while, the, while the Prophet, you know, was, you know, uh, ditching, you know, to make a trench, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the Battle of the Trench. Mm. He told them about the prophecy that, you know, th at that period, the Persians already conquered parts of Rome up to Egypt. Mm. Um, but the prophecy sort of the prophet said that you know the Romans will be uh, victorious in this battle, mm. and at that time it was uh, very difficult to believe this just because of um, and and I am a 
historian here. Mm. Um, it, it was quite difficult to believe just because of, you know, the uh, course of the second um, domination of the Roman Empire. Okay, let mm -hmm. me answer about this. And you are yes. the one who said you want, like to see an uh, accurate hadith, right? Uh, yes. According to your hadith, this verse came after the room became victorious, not before. And this is the hadith in front of your eyes. Go ahead and read it. Uh, I can see the Quran here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take maybe a second for you to come there. Okay, sure. Let me just make sure YouTube is live. Okay. Is it coming now? <clears throat> uh, no, I still see the Quran. Oh, okay, yes, I can see the mm. Hadith. Okay. Um, Prophet, I can just see half of it, sorry. Okay, I think it's the delay. Just give it a few seconds. Okay, Abu Sa'id narrated on the back. Okay, on the day of Badr, the Romans had a victory of the Persians, so the believers were pleased with that. Then the following morning, the Romans had been defeated. Up to his saying, the believers were rejoiced. With mm. the help of Allah, he said, so the believers were happy with the victory. Mm. Hmm. Okay. So, um, so the claim is gone. And as you see, this is Sahih Hadith. It's authentic. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Not only that, even if this Hadith doesn't exist, the numbers will beat your prophet. Why? Because the word Bada in Arabic, and I'm sure, I don't know, I think you speak Arabic. But I mean from three to nine, correct? Mm -hmm. If it's ten, I don't speak Arabic, but yes, that's okay. Right. If it's ten, then your prophet is false. If you go and read, you will see that the date you are you are the one who mentioned the date of the ball. So you will see that it took the Roman long after that to be victorious because victory is only accomplished when the war is over, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. as long as we are fighting, maybe you take a city from me today, tomorrow I might take it back. So it's not a victory yet. So this is temporarily victory. But you will notice that the Roman, they were not victorious. And this is always, you know, you can go on Google and you will find it took it took that at least 14 to 15 to 16 years until the Roman, they really were victorious over the Persian. Secondly, there's a mistake here in the verse you chose for me. If you look at me, you will see that the, uh, uh, the Roman, when they are victorious, who is the one who will be uh, happy? Uh, the Muslims. Why? Uh, this is a good question. Um, I, I I don't know the 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 Islamic. Uh, I don't I don't know the position for it, but I would assume it's because, uh, as you know, with history. After the Prophet died, um, they were able to quickly conquer both Roman no, and no, the Persian No, no, you see, no. Empire. You see, the believers will be happy because the Romans are victorious, not because the Roman will be, you know, victorious, uh, uh, not because later the Muslim will be victorious over the Roman, no. No, but it weakened both empires, you see. No, 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 this is not about, you know, the, because if you go and read the tafsir, you will see, because supposedly the Christians are believers and the Muslims are believers, so the Arab, they were making fun of Muhammad, saying to them, look like your God is not helping. So Muhammad, he made a response saying, well, he is going to help, right? So here you see the stupidity that secondly, uh, like suddenly... Can you, can you, show, me, can you show me this um, uh, Open it, here we go. We open chapter 30, verse number 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. There, there's a delay as well, so please... No problem, me. don't worry about it. This is... I will. Let me open the tafsir. <clears throat> Chapter 30, verse number 4. And there's a book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul, too. You can, you know, you can read it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let us see, this is Jalalain. Okay, a command before the first victory. Okay, and the result, God command, other word, 
Okay, let's see uh, the book of Asbab and Zul. Maybe will make it better, easier for us. Uh, there's no Asbab and Zul here. Let's see if we have pass. All right. Uh, okay, in a few years. Okay, in a few years, baby usually means between three and nine years or ten years. So two armies met again. Seven years after this former encounter, defeat the Persians to God belongs the command before and after that is before the defeat of the. Uh, okay. Well, you know, actually, here we go. Uh, the one is complaining, the one is making fun of this is the disbelievers. When the Roman uh, will defeat the Persian and also when he gave victory, who is uh -huh. the one who gave victory? Allah. Okay. So. Uh, let us see. I'm trying to find where, like, exactly the translation, you know, most of the time is not really uh, a decent translation. Let's see Ibn Kathir. Yeah, go ahead, go to Ibn Kathir. Maybe Ibn Kathir will make it better. <clears throat> Even though Ibn Kathir in Arabic have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir in English, but, you know, I don't speak Arabic, so we have to use it. Um, so this is Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Uh, okay. So why you find that, but what you're trying to say is that the reason why the Muslims were happy is because the Romans were Christians and they are yeah. fellow believers, yeah. right? Yeah, because the, pag the pagans supposedly making fun of the Christian, they lost the Persian, they destroyed them, you know, they killed them, they took uh -huh. Jerusalem, you know. Uh, Okay, and Allah will help, you know, Allah will help who he will. So Allah, he helped the Roman. Okay, and for what reason? Let us see. Uh, uh, on the day they were the revealed Persian were prevailing over the Roman, the Muslim wanted the Roman revealed over Sorry, the Muslims. So book is this? Read carefully. Book? This is Mikathir. The Muslim wanted the Roman to prevail over them because they were people of the book. So I'll give it a second. I, I think it's still loading. Okay, there it is. The decision of the matter before helps. On the day they will reveal the Persian will prevail over the Romans. The Muslim wanted the Romans to prevail over the Persians because they were both people. Follow their book. Concerning hmm. this, Allah said. And then he says. And the Quraysh, on order, on the other hand, wanted the Persian to prevail uh -huh. because neither of them were people who follow the book, correct? Yeah, that's okay. right. There's a reaction. Okay, let us, let us hear, see how, how silly is that. As long we are people of the book and Allah will give us victory because we are people of the book. How we are the same people who we attack a few years after but we are the same people who worship Jesus. How the Muslim will be happy to see the people of the book victorious over the Persian if all of us we are going to go to hell anyway? Does it make a difference anyway? So here you see Muhammad how he flip apart. Muhammad when he tried to make himself look like a Jew and the Jew they rejected him. So Muhammad he decided to kill all the Jews and the Christians. Mm -hmm. Muhammad is like Obama. When he go to Egypt, he's a Muslim. He sit with the uh, Christian church. He is a Christian. He hold the Bible. He sit with the atheist. He make fun of the Bible. He sit with the homosexual. He is a gay. That is Muhammad. He changed his skin, depend in the location. And now we need to ask you: As long this is the you know we are here, when the Quran says we are people of the book, do we have a book? As in Christians, yes, you guys have a book. What is our book? The Bible, the Gospels. What the Quran says about it? What it says? What is the name? Uh, the name of the Injil. Injil. But is it Injil? Mm -hmm. Is it a Greek word? Injil is a... Yes, it's it's a Greek word, correct. Okay. Yeah. So Jesus, according to Muslims, or, or Isa, he was sent to yep. the Jews, correct? Um... Oh, no, I don't think so. What do you mean, no, so? 
you Muslim, you say, the Muslim, you Muslim, you say, the only messenger who sent for all mankind, it was the Prophet Muhammad. Um, I, I know Muslims say this. I'm not going to deny this. I don't think mm. there's a Quranic reference that, that explicitly well, states Well, let us go this. to the Quran then, you see. I know your Quran better than your Prophet himself. So, okay, let's see it. All right. You're going to show me No, this is, not, this, is, this is not okay. having to do with our topic, you know? Sure, okay. Okay. In chapter 2, verse number 80, uh, 87, Allah, he sent Musa, and after Musa, he sent Isa. He sent it to who? To the Jews. No, okay, right. So so there is, if you go to Surah Sa, for example, um, you, you will see verses where Prophet Isa is speaking to the Jews. Hmm. But if I'm correct, there is a verse in Surah to Yasin hmm. um, that talks about some messengers being sent, uh, disciples of Isa. But this is so, a this is a contradiction. This is not a proof. This is a contradiction. This is what I'm trying to show you. Actually, thank you for helping me. So Allah He sent a book. It's called Injil, which is a Greek language, to a person. His name is Isa, and he was sent to the Jews. So I am sent to the Jews, but my book is written in Greek. It's like saying I am sent to the Arab, and my book is in German. This is another okay, mistake. Okay, no, no, but 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 you have to remember the context of it, right? What is the context? So, uh, the context is when when Jesus was there. Mm -hmm. uh, at his time, there were uh, there were Jews, of course, but there were also Romans, right? There were occupiers. No problem. And but the, the Quran confirm. No, the Quran confirm uh, that Allah will never send the messenger except by the tongue of His people, and the tongue of the Jews is a, is a, is the Hebrew. It's not you know actually they fight they fight the Aramaic, the Hebrew, they fight etc. But being forced to, they've been forced to use it. Even it's written in their old uh, all the scriptures because they've been forced to, but. The Quran confirm, and this is your problem, not my problem, that we never send a messenger. This is chapter 14, verse number 4. We never send a messenger save with his language to his folk. Why? Okay, so, In order so to make what, it what clear is, for them. Okay, so what is the folk of Jesus? Who is the folk of Jesus? Say, sorry, can I just say something, though? Go ahead. Uh, right. We, we know that the Romans occupied Jerusalem, right? Um, and there were a lot of Roman soldiers there. Hmm. Are, are you saying that God would abandon the the Romans because they couldn't speak the language or God would uh, I am saying what your God saying I'm not saying what my God saying I'm showing you what so the Quran saying the Quran saying we were never sent to save mm. with the language of his folk that mm. he might make claim for them mm. um, can we see the interpretation please for this sure here we go which uh, you want to be Kathir or Qurtubi or Tabari or Jalalain which one you want um, let's go with Ibn Kathir please all right so chapter 14, verse number four. Mm -hmm. And this is verse number four. And here it says, we not we sent not a messenger except to the language. Okay, here it says, Allah kind and compassion. Sorry, it's just loading. Give it a second. All right, I will give you time. So you can, you can read it yourself for us. Mm -hmm. No problem. Tell me if the whole text is showing or not. So, because I'm, I'm from my side, it's showing fine. Yeah, can you just zoom out a bit, please? All right. Let's see now. Uh, a bit more. Okay. Um, if you could just move it a bit more to the right, then that'd be perfect. Okay. Okay, every prophet was sent with the language of his people, guidance, misguidance. For me. Okay, mm. Allah is kind and compassionate with his creation, sending messengers to them from among them and speaking their language. Mm. So they are able to understand the message that the messengers were sent with. Allah said, and then the verse itself. Okay, mm. sending them from among them. Okay, so that means that he's going to be from them, which Jesus. And speak in their language. Okay, was Jesus a Jew? Mm -hmm. His mother was. Yeah, and now, now let's confirm more stuff. If we go in the Quran, we will find this. Yeah. The Quran saying the following verse. Chapter 3, verse number 49. Isa speaking to the Jews, saying to them, I came to you from your Lord. 
to the Jews specifically, to the Israelis specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, the verse does say that. Okay, so I came, I was sent to the Jews, I was sent to the Israeli, the Israelis speak Hebrew, and then Allah, he decided to choose the Greek version of the Bible, which is obviously, this is the world is known at that time, for the Greek one, Greek one, and Muhammad did not have any idea what he is using. He just chose a word which he did not know what it, what it means. And he claimed that he never sent the messenger except to speak the tongue of his people, and he had to be from the people. So in order for Jesus to have a Greek book, mm -hmm. according to the Quran, then Jesus had to be Greek, and his people have to be the Greek. Mm -hmm. I, oh, okay. He will be a messenger to God to the Israelites, to whom he was saying. Yeah, I guess you're right. I okay. guess you're right. In the top yeah. of that, look what happened now. Muhammad is no prophet no more. Why? Because the Quran says that Allah He sent him Rasulan Lil Alameen. Correct? To the mankind. He was sent as a mercy to the mankind, yeah. Yeah, he's a messenger to mankind too. Sirajan, Mudiyan, Sirajan, Muniran. Mm -hmm. So yep. uh, so we send you as a light for mankind. But then when the Quran says in chapter 14, verse number four, we never send the messenger to any except his own people. Why? So he can deliver the message to them in their language in order to do what? To make it clear. That makes sense. So based on this, Muhammad, if he was a saint, sent as a person, he was sent to the Arab and the Arab only. Mm -hmm. I follow your logic. Yep. This is not my logic. This is logic of the Quran. I'm just reading your book, my friend. This is not my logic. Mm. Okay. So Muhammad is a fraud. Because, and, the, and the verse is so clear, it says, we never, we never, and he said that when Muhammad was a prophet already, correct? This is not after Muhammad, he died. Muhammad now is the one who delivered this message, saying to him, we never send a messenger. So Muhammad is included. No, this is a very, um, is a very strong argument, actually. Um, I, I don't have an answer for this, but, but let, let me take this one away with me. Um, and now, actually, we, we are not done. This is, will open more doors for more crazy stuff. Because the uh -huh. Quran says that Allah, he sent Muhammad uh, yep. to Mecca and what is around it. Is that correct? It's... <laughs> It says, yeah, I, I read this, you're right. It okay, that. so uh, uh, in chapter 6, verse number uh, uh, 62, 92, sorry, it says, mm -hmm. we have a blessed the book, which is the Quran, revealed to confirm, which was revealed before it. Actually, this is false translation. Uh, uh, revealed what is between his hands. If you know Arabic, it says here, Musaddiq, الذي بين يديه, confirming, believing in what is between his hand. And this is the book of the Christian and the Jews. Uh -huh. And now he will see here. So confirming the book, which is sent before, let us change the translator because this is false translation. Always the Muslim, they, they, they deny and they try to fabricate the translation because when you say what is between his hands, that destroyed the whole Quran. Confirming not what was before it, what is between his hands. You will see all translation, they took the word between his hands. Anyone can take this, take it to Google, and you can see, مصدقاً الذي بين يدي. And by the way, this is this is a very, a very bad Arabic. I never heard of somebody saying, مصدقوا الذي بين يديه. What is that? What kind of Arabic this one? But anyway, let it go. So, believing in what is between his hand, and to warn what is around Mecca, the mother of towns. Mecca is a small village at that time anyway. Until now, actually, it's small, it's small. You know, the investment and the money, etc. But still, it's nothing. So, uh, Muhammad was sent only to Mecca and what is around it. And suddenly, Muhammad became a messenger for mankind. And then uh, the Quran says, we never sent a messenger except 
to the people, speak in the tongue of the people. And now that will talk us to the from person. If you remember, Allah, he sent Moses and Aaron to speak to the Pharaoh. That's right, yeah. Okay. Is the Pharaoh from the people of Moses? The Pharaoh wasn't Jewish. Um, but like I was men mentioning about the, the Jesus point, because, mm. you know, they lived in Egypt. Uh, they had to interact with the Egyptians. Yeah. Uh, so if they were to accept the belief, they would be part of the people of Moses. My you friend, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. The Quran says we never send the messenger except to his people. So Moses will not be a messenger to anyone except his people. So how he is a messenger to his people and then he go to Pharaoh, invite him to believe in Allah and ask him his people to believe in Allah too. So that broke what, what Allah is because the verse before it says we never sent. Correct? We never sent. No, no, like I said, it's a very strong point. Uh, I need to take this away with me. I, I don't have the answer. It's all a right. very strong point. Okay, so until now, uh, I'm yeah. showing you things after thing after things. All of them, they are crazy, and all of them prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. So if you remember when you called me, I said, well, he's a prophet. Can you give me a prophecy? And turn to be everything he said, this guy is, is wrong. Right, we, we, we spoke about one prophecy and we spoke about this topic here. No, all of them, by the way, are prophecies. All of them, if you, they leave, because Muhammad was not in the time of Moses, correct? He, he was not, no. Okay, so when I say something, nobody knows this is a prophecy, even if it's in the past. If I say how God created the earth, God, he told me, this is what prophecy is, God told me, Prophecies can be about something happening in the future, or will happen in the future, or something will happen in the happen in the past, but nobody knows. Something secretly uncovered. So God informed me, and He told me how He created the earth, as an example, how He created the baby. So by time, people didn't discover how the baby is created. So now you say, oh, Muhammad, he prophesied that the baby is created in a certain way, which is wrong. Like he said, that the, the sperm came in from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is a crazy. So he prophesied how the baby is made, and time come, and if, if science confirm what Muhammad is saying, that will be a prophecy, but the baby is already made. Muhammad himself was a baby, correct? Okay, so 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 let, let, let's talk about that one right there, you just okay. mentioned. Yeah. Um, can, can you pull up the verse, please? No um, problem. If we go to chapter, chapter 86, yep. chapter 86, verse number, let us go verse and 6 and 7. Here we go. This is the Quran. Um, and as long you mentioned before that you like Ibn Kathir, we can go to Ibn Kathir. You don't mind, right? Yep, let's go to Ibn Kathir. All Just right. give it a second, it's loading. All right. So we go to Ibn Kathir. And let us see. So he created... Yeah, I'll give uh, it time because it's going to load now. I'm opening it yeah. there. Proceeding between the backbone and the ribs. Hmm. Okay. All right, this is Ibn Kathir. I, I, have, I put it for you on the screen. Uh, let us read together. Mm -hmm. Just give it a second. Okay. Okay, all I can see says, then Allah misleads whom he wills, I guess. And this is another, another thing later we can talk about. Allah, he misleads us he, who he will. <laughs> but uh, this is God of Satan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. we, we can discuss this. That's okay. All right. No so read for me, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you are still scrolling down, so I think it's late. Okay. Right. So let man see what he has created. Uh, this is alerting man. Okay, you know, that's, I, I wrote it down because we want to go about where the sperm is coming. This is the important for us. Yeah. 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 He is created from uh, water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that comes birth, comes uh, bursting forth from, I can't see if you can just zoom out a bit, sorry. Um, the man and, yeah, just a little bit, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Thus, the child is produced from both them. 
by the permission of Allah, due to this Allah says, proceeding from the backbone and the ribs, meaning uh, the loins of the man and the bones, ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Hmm. Hmm. And by the way, this is false translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say all the loins, it's the backbone. Muhammad, but, but, said, uh, sorry, I'm just a bit confused here. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Um, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Backbone, meaning the backbone or loins of the man. Okay, so we're talking about two separate people. Hmm. And okay, so it's talking about sexual fluid coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs hmm. of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Hmm. Hmm. How yeah. In, how in okay. the world this is from God? Because we know sperm comes from the testicles, right? So. Hmm. No, according to Muhammad, testicles are decoration, like the one you put them in Christmas tree. You know, they are hanged there for like, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like a Christmas light. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's uh, good to see them the laughing. Uh, you know, I like it. So my friend, is it from God? Is it really? This is God. This is prophecy. Sorry, what is it? What does it mean? Ribs of the woman. Can we please? The uh, ribs. What, what you know, mean? if you go yeah. and read the interpretation, it says in Arabic, it says, Actually, even here, in the Kathir, he says that. He says, uh, uh, referring to her chest. In fact, in Arabic, it says, The location where the necklace is. You see like the the what they call it the uh, there's that there's little little uh, hole yeah the bone yeah yeah little hole between the, the top of your ribs right away in the top this is where the location of the necklace when a woman she wear a necklace tight necklace that will be in that location so according to muhammad this is where sperm is coming from so can you can you just send me the link sorry just i, I apologize so send me this link my friend the problem with this website it doesn't show link it shows the, uh i can i can give you the uh, let us say the the website, and you can open it from there because there's no uh, like unique link. You know what I mean? I will post it in the chat. This is I'm, yeah. I'm using the website. It's called wordofallah.com. Word but, but of we're, Allah. We're, you're talking about Ibn Kathir, anyways, right? Yeah, this is Ibn Kathir. Yeah, doesn't matter. Okay, you can open it any website any want you want. Yeah. So let me find it myself. Give me one second. Yeah, I post it actually in the chat. You can use the same website. Word of Allah. Search for wordofallah.com, and then go to chapter eighty six. Uh, 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 verse, uh, you know, from one to ten in this website is shown you. Okay, so I'm in Word of <clears throat> Chapter what? Sorry. Chapter eighty-six. Yeah. Okay. Word of Allah slash tafsir. Yeah, I, I see you know? it here. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I was just double checking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's it. That there. Yeah. How this is can be from God? Is it obvious that Muhammad is a fraud? This is prophecy. Do you see the baby is made, you know, since Eve, correct? In the past. Look, look, I'm not going to, um, I, I, I don't lie. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say that this is correct. Um, because it's not. It's not. Y you know what I mean. I respect that on you. Um, so so I'm not going to sit here and, and try to make up excuses. It's 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 very clear. So why, my friend, you're still a Muslim okay. then? I mean, isn't it isn't it obvious? I mean, this guy is is claiming to be a prophet, claiming that God told him this. This is not hadith, we can go over it, we can run over it, we can say, you know what, maybe somebody put it there. This is the Quran. Okay, how about, how about the teachings? Don't you think at least they're good? You know what I mean? Our friend, I can be a person who speak about being good as much as you want, doesn't make me from God. Because I can earn respect of people for being good, you know. I can be a person who have my own agenda, maybe I want to be a king, and Muhammad became a king. And, you know, as long as you are talking about teaching, when you say good teaching, what good teaching mean? Um, I, I would say good teachings mean, uh, I'll give you an example, actually. Mm. Um, charity. Charity. Well, yeah. how Muhammad, he did the charity? He told them, go and attack the Romans so you can get the blonde girls. 
تغزو الروم تغنبوا بنات الاصفر Yep, this is true. I I read this, but in 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 the greater context of things, it was in a way to motivate the men. Okay, you know what I so mean. So you motivate your men by telling them you can kidnap blondie women, not by serving God. No, there there are many ways to motivate people. You know what I mean? No, my friend. Um, if actually, if you go, you see the verse. Uh -huh. You will see. That the person who said to him, "Don't tempt us by women," Muhammad he claimed that he is a hypocrite. But reality is, what do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, uh, uh, you know, when 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 the guy he said to Muhammad, "Oh, excuse me, don't tempt me, don't tempt me," he was asking Muhammad, "Why in the world you are tempting us to go to war? Those people did not invade us, did not attack us, did not kill us. They never come here." Why want to go there? He did not say because we want to spread Islam, because we want to bring them to. No, he said, attack the Roman, get the blonde girls. So the man who said to him, "Why you are tempting me with this to go to jihad for no reason except blonde women?" Muhammad accused him to be a kafir, to be a hypocrite, and to be a false person. And, and this was before the Battle of Mutar, or. After, sorry, just, just. This is when Muhammad he decided to send his messenger to attack, uh, to to warn the Roman, uh, convert or else. And when they refuse to convert, uh -huh. you know, actually after before he even he sent, according to the Muslim, not me, I'm, I'm not the one who make this history. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, this is before Tabuk, right? Yeah. This is, uh, and then he okay. decided to go to Tabuk, and he failed. He failed in yep. Tabuk. He went there. He could not make it. So he was, you know, his, the victory he promised was a was a fraud. And if, and by the way, you are the one who mentioned to me that Muhammad he predicted that we will conquer the Roma, correct? Yes, but but you see, before Tabuk, before he even went there, it was to avenge the Battle of Mutar. If I'm correct, it doesn't matter. This is where they've been You see, I don't I don't go by all the history of Islam. I believe all of it is Shishkaba. But however, mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad. The one who was happy for the Roman to be victorious. Now he want to yep. kill the Roman because they are kuffar, which is very funny and very uh, uh, crazy. In the same time, he is not asking the Muslim to go and attack to 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 spread Islam. In fact, in chapter eight, chapter nine, the same chapter we are reading, you will see that when the Muslims being forbidden to have any non-believers in Mecca, the Muslims they fear they fear the property. You know, read with me, chapter 9, verse number 28, the same chapter. Oh, who you believe, you know, verily, let us, you know, this translation is very funny. The ad words is not there. Uh, let us go and see another idiot. They make it so long for no reason. Okay, here we go. Oh, who you believe, truly the pagan or unclean, not just, this is a very fascist, racist. No, but, but, but sorry, you, you, you're, you're jumping topics though. No, no, we are not. I will show you why. We are, listen. Okay. Oh, who you believe, truly the pagans are unclean, so let them not, after this year of their approach, to this, uh, 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 of the, uh, uh, after this year of theirs, approach the second mosque. And if you fear poverty, soon Allah will reach you, and right away he says, attack the Roman. Attack the Christians and the Jews, kill them. So how Allah will reach you? So attacking the Roman was a solution for money, not for God. No, no, no. You, you see, um, from the Islamic perspective, mm. um, the reason why the uh, the Muslims attacked um, the Romans was because their client state um, murdered their emissary or the missionary sent to. Uh, convert him to Islam. Let us go by that and let's see how funny is that. So mm -hmm. you send you send the messenger saying either you convert to Islam or I will kill you, and then you expect them to give you a hug. He is the one who is announcing war, convert or else. Aslam Taslam. That's what he said to him. Aslam Taslam. You want to be no, safe? I don't think this is what he said. I'm not too sure exactly. Here we go. Let said. me show you, my friend. Don't, you know, for me, remember, you are talking to Christian Prince. I'm not a kid. Aslam, Aslam Taslam. Here we go. And this is the hadith, and you are the one who said you accept uh, Sahih hadith. That's correct, yeah. Let the, the, right. the screen load, sorry. Bear with me a second. And your prophet, he keep me mentioning that as them to many people. Always he said that. But anyway, let us go. 
Uh, I mean, if you if what you're saying is true, okay, then here we then, go. then it's justified. Okay, here but we go. But if it's not, then no. Read it, my friend. Here we go. Yeah, read it, read it, read you it. it. And you know, okay. this is the funny. The Muslim they say that he killed him. They killed they, they killed the messenger. But the messenger is the Hill Kalbi. But according to many Islamic books, the Hill Kalbi he did not die in that no, day. No, no, no. The messenger was. Had it right now. We go on in front of you. It says the hill be my friend. So, Muslim yeah, history is. is a fabrication. So, read with me. So, Allah, Allah He sent to the governor of Al Basra in that time, uh, Harkulais, whatever his name, he, uh, uh, and He said to him, In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the compassion, Muhammad is the slave of Allah, blah 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 blah, to uh, Harkulais, uh, uh, the ruler of the Byzantium. Uh, blah 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 blah. I call you to Islam. If you become Muslim, you will be safe. <laughs> Sorry, it's just loading up. Okay, Messenger, Messenger Allah, which they had brought to the governor of Basra, which in turn passed it to Heraclius. Okay, that's the governor. That's right. He read it out saying, In the name of Allah, the mercy, the compassionate from Muhammad, the slave of Allah and his messenger to Heraclius, rule of the Byzantium. Okay, I got it to stand. If you become Muslim, you will be safe, and Allah will double reward if you turn away. Then you incur wrong action of your subjects, O people of the book. Come to a proposition which is the same for us and you. A big one is that you are a messenger that you are muslims so sorry mm. Mm. become okay. muslim become muslim you will be safe otherwise i will kill you this is a threat this is not a message no, of no, peace. it doesn't say i'll kill you but but it is threatening for sure no no my it friend aslam taslam arabic is my first language aslam taslam that's what muslim they say become muslim you will be safe otherwise we will kill you that's mm -hmm. it that's it you know mm. so this is what you're saying it says in arabic right it's in arabic and english too you see, Aslam Taslam, this is this is literally transla translation for the Arabic. Uh, become you a Muslim. In English, become in English, a Muslim. Says, oh, sorry. Continue. Okay. Become a Muslim, be become safe. Safe from what? The guy, he's the king. Uh, and Allah will double your. He's not a refugee. Word. You know, like he come into your door saying, please help me, give me, you know, give me shelter. This is a king. He's also. saved from God. Saved from God. No, my friend, because the action after that, he went to fight them. What's saved from God? Isn't it the Quran says, fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last day, chapter 9, verse 29? We just agreed that, my friend. Fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last day, and what is forbidden by his messenger. So what is the problem with those people? They don't approve the messenger. What we do with them? We send them a book says convert to Islam, or we send them a book says Aslam to Islam, which means convert or die. And the only way to stay alive is to pay us jizya. So if you reject that choice to pay jizya like a slave, be under our command, then we will kill you. Choose one. Okay. And as you see, you are the one who mentioned to me that Muhammad, he motivate his men by the blonde girls. Mm. If I am a decent person, speaking of God, I will never mention, hey guys, they have a blonde girls there. <laughs> Let's go and get them. I will say, let us bring uh, the religion of truth to everybody. What does, what the girls have to do with this? And you will see, as long as we are talking about women, how how women and sex involve very much in Islam. You are the one who mentioned, well, don't Muhammad have a good teaching? Is this a verse? There's a verse about women she can offer herself to the Prophet. What does this have to do with God? Let's see this verse, please. Okay. Remember, I am supposed to be a Prophet of God. And you all, you know, you want to believe in me. And then I say to you, if you have a wife or a daughter or anything, you know, she likes to give herself to me so I can, with my respect to your family, I don't mean to insult. Uh, you know, if your wife, she likes to give herself to me, that's good. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. what what does it have to do with God? How how that serve God? You know, this, this is nothing to do with God. Chapter 33, verse number 50. Muhammad suddenly, he started counting how many women he can sleep with. And as you see, the whole town, all the verses, look how long, look how long this verse. 
your wives will you are sending him a verse that he can sleep with his wives isn't it too late and then you will find that all of those things are privileged to Muhammad and a believing woman she offer herself to the prophet to do nikah to her which means to f her the translation says to marry her where is the word marry show me in arabic i want to see it it says she no, offer no, herself nikah doesn't mean that nikah means uh, sexual intercourse this is nikah means yeah. sexual intercourse thank you very much so mm -hmm. and women she is offering herself and let me ask you now is it true that if your prophet his eyes fall into a woman her husband must divorce her um I I think I've studied this. Yes, I think I've heard it. I've come across this. Hmm. Yes. So? Yeah. You, you mentioned to me, what about his good teaching? Is that a good teaching? That I'm a prophet of God. I go to your house and I respect your wife. I see your wife. I like her. I say divorce her so I can have her. What does it have to do with God serving? Isn't it, this is against the teaching of God? If you go and read the Ten Commandments, what God he gave to Moses, it's clearly saying that adultery, fornication, wishing a woman she is not yours, is forbidden. This guy, he claimed that this is a privilege to him. And all his privilege is about sex and money. Here you will see, this is the book of Al-Qurtubi, and I'm showing you the reference in front of you. And I'm going to use a Google Translation. And I will post short link for it. This is Shia library, by the way. But this book is not a Shia. Qurtubi is a Muslim Sunni, correct? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now I hear you. So I'm saying mm -hmm. the website I'm, I'm using now is a Shia library, but the book is a Sunni. Shia library have all books. Who, you know? who, who is it? Who, who, who wrote the book? Al-Qurtubi. Okay. You heard mm -hmm. of Al-Qurtubi, right? Yeah, he's okay. Sunni though. Volume 14, page number 212. It says here, that but which the, book, sorry, which book of his? I apologize. Tafsir al Qurtubi, Tafsir. Okay. The okay. okay. Volume 14, that's the Arabic version. There's no English, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Page number 212. It says here, it counts for you uh, the privilege of Muhammad. He says, and what is was lawful for the Prophet as a privilege? 16. The best of the booty. Second, to take the fifth of the booty. And then, and, and, and then, uh, uh, and increase more than four wives. Even Muslim have only four wives. Muhammad, he have unlimited. There's no limit. And then to F a woman, beloved Zilhiba, which means uh, she say, I offer you yourself, he F her. Number six, to F a woman without her parents approving approval. All of them is about sex. Number seven, to F a woman without dowry. He do not need to pay for free. Number eight, to F around the Kaaba or during the Hajj, number uh, 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 10, and if his eyes fall into a woman, which means he like her, it is a must for her husband to divorce her so he can F her. And this is what happened with his son from adoption Zaid. Let us use a Google translation. Read carefully. This is a prophet of God. You know, this is a prophet of God. Let us go to number no, 10. No, you're, 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 you're right. I, I remember studying this now. Okay. Okay. So, um, what kind okay. of a prophet? He have a good teaching, as you said. If his eyes fall into your wife, you have to divorce her. So he can sleep with her. Why is he? Is he short of women? I mean, the guy, he have tons of wives at home. At home. You see what I was told, I remember um, having this discussion when we were studying, mm. and the Imam said, even though this was a a privilege, uh, he did not utilize it. What do you mean, Israel? You know, he, he did practice he, it. He never, he never did it. This no, is no, no, no. He, take, he took Sophia. There's a verse about it in the Quran. In the chapter of Al-Ahzab, you know, Zaid, when Zaid he finished with her and the you mean Zainab? Zainab, we mean to Jahshia, Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. So, no, no, you, you see, with her, the situation was the Prophet 
came into you, you know there's multiple narrations but the, the more authentic as the scholars say is the one that he came in to the house uh, Zaid wasn't there hmm. uh, the prophet says something um, what he said what he said remind me uh, I don't remember off the top of my mind he said my heart my heart to flip for you he flirted with the women correct yes it, it okay was, yes. so what do you mean he did not practice that he went to the house of a married woman she is married she is not separated she is not going through divorce she is in the house of the husband he go and he is there why because he is the father of the husband you see you don't you don't enter a house of a man when the when the man is not there correct uh this was his son at the time you know thank you so you know because this. he is the father he was allowed to enter so he was given a trust trust he don't deserve when I trust you because you're my father to enter my house when I, my wife is alone, you are there for a reason because you are my father. What this man he did, he took advantage of being the father, go into the house of the husband when the husband is not there, and now he started flirting with the women. And this is what the Muslims say, flirting. I believe they, they are really sleeping together. Because my friend, if a woman, she is really a good woman, and... Let us say, God forbid, your wife, she is home, and your father come to visit you, and then your father flirt with the women, your wife. How angry your wife she would be. She would be very angry, don't you agree? Yeah, she would be. Mm -hmm. But she is not angry, she is proud. You know? And then the interpretation says that when Zainab, she told him, Fafatina, it says, Fafatina Zaid. So he got it. So right away he went to Muhammad and he told him, you know what, I don't like her, I want to divorce her. So now he knew that they are sleeping together. No, I don't think they were sleeping together. My friend, um, what is the difference between somebody flirt with a woman she is married? Isn't it, this is a sign that he is willing to sleep with her because already he disobey the good ethic of God. What is different? Isn't it your Quran? Isn't it your prophet? He says that adultery is adultery of the eye and the tongue. Correct? Correct, yeah. He okay. Did say this. So he mm -hmm. committed adultery. I mean, the guy who speak about, <laughs> you know, speak about doing good stuff, he is the last one to follow the good stuff. So Muhammad himself, he says, it is Allah verily has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man would indulge in which of necessity he must commit, which is very stupid to say, because now he is making it, making it a, a, as a, as a, a, as a, like destiny, the adultery of the eye, the lustful of the look, and the adultery of the tongue. So Muhammad, he, you know, he, you know, he, he, he said it clearly that this is adultery of a tongue, adultery of an eye, because his eye saw the women, correct? And she was wearing sexy clothes, and now he did adultery with her his eye because he wished a woman she is not his. He have a lost for look at the women. And then the result of that, he committed adultery with his tongue. But this is what the Muslim says. Maybe. We don't know what happened for real. This is what the news says. And not only that, if you go to Al Qurtubi, you will see that Zainab, she claimed that after that, Muhammad, he flirted with her each time. Her husband, he tried to sleep with her. Allah, he make his penis swell. Is that correct? Uh, I have never heard of this one, to be honest. Can you show me this? Okay, let us see. Let me show you. Hold on. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the Christian, they say that Muhammad have no miracle. Here we go. He have a miracle. Allah, he made the penis of the husband swell. You know? Uh, let's see. So who said who said the Prophet had no miracle? We Christian we say he have the Quran says that too. The Quran says he have no miracles. <laughs> but in the Islamic tradition his book, they say that he have. But let us see. Uh let us see what the what the Muslim they say. What what the Zainab she said. Mm -hmm. And and for miracles, there is the 
Um, well, why you search this one up? Sorry, I'm not sure if you found it yet. Uh, the Hadith on Zina, but yes, the splitting of the moon. We will go to that and you will die laughing. Just wait. Okay. Just and wait. also the feeding of many people. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Here we go. This is Tafsir al Qurtubi, the same book I gave you, the same pages. You can read. It says, And Zaydan, the Warrama Dari Kaminu, mentioned in a hadith coming from Zainab that she said that, that Zainab, Zayd, he, his penis is swell each time he tried to get it close to her. <laughs> Are you sharing your screen? Sorry. Yeah, it's in the screen. Give it a few moments, sorry. Let me pause the link. I will pause the link too in the chat. And you, everybody yeah. can use Google Translation, you know. So, uh, uh, here it says actually. Uh, yeah, I can see it now, okay. It says here, uh, Zayd So uh, Zayd, he came at night. He went to his bed. Uh, and then Zainab, she said, and he could not do it to me. Which means he could not F her. And nothing make, make him not to be able except Allah. He forbid him. He could not do it. And then he says, In Zaydan, so Zayd, his penis, swell. <laughs> so imagine now we have God become a pimp. This woman, she is lawful for the husband, not lawful for Muhammad. She is married to the husband, not to Muhammad. And the husband is the son of Muhammad by adoption. And now Muhammad, because he liked the women, even he forbid adoption. It was a turning point for Muhammad. Suddenly, adoption is forbidden. Just because you want to have the women to sleep with her because the Arabs start saying, what the heck, this guy when is going to sleep? With his own son wife so this is why the Quran says you are afraid what people will say and you are telling the husband to keep his wife which means the Quran saying you Muhammad you are being hypocrite now you are telling them you are telling the guy keep your wife when Allah he inform you that he want to give him when you know this is yours take her <laughs> where's the ethic this is God or this is this is a scam and let me post the link for everybody so anyone can use Google Translation, including you, when you speak Arabic. But you can feel free, you can take it to any sheikh in the mosque and let him read for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, in the in the in the old testament, we have a story yeah. of a pro of a, of a, of David. Uh, you know, uh, he uh, took a wife of somebody else. He sent him to war. So he yeah. will die and he take. But you will see that the Bible condemn him. God, he punished him. God even yeah, said to him, don't use... build don't build the temple for, for me. Uh, your, 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 your money, your hand is full of blood. So God condemned him for that. Not only that, God, he punished him. Even the son he have from that woman, he died. Here, we see the opposite. Muhammad, he want to take everyone, women, by blessing of Allah, encouragement of Allah. And you will see that Aisha, she said, Inni ara rabbuka ila hawaka, ya Muhammad. Allah, I see, Aisha, she said, uh -huh. uh, I see that your God has to your temptation, your de sexual desire. Uh -huh. To your convenience, yeah. Uh -huh. So Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad, He's a fraud. You see, I, I wanted to speak to you about two things here. Mm. Okay. Um, it's actually three. So so first of all, I wanted, because you, cause you're an Arab, right? right. Um, I'm guessing you're born a Christian as well. Mm. Right? No, we, okay. don't, we don't believe in as a Christian that we are born. We are believe that we are born again. Born again mean you can be yeah. born of a Christian family, but does not make you a Christian. You know, you are mm -hmm. going to be Christian if you understand who is a Christ and you accept Christ as your savior this is called born again go ahead but but what, what I mean is that I'm, I'm guessing that you lived your whole life uh, in 
Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, okay, the, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so now you read the Quran uh, in Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you? I, I've been told, obviously, I don't speak Arabic. That it's a, a lot better in Arabic. Um, in English, I I always said, uh, it's not very coherent book. You know what I mean? My friend, what you is just said, what you just said, what you just said, to prove to me that uh, the Quran is stupid. Let me let me explain to you. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Quran is in Arabic, and in Arabic is way better, correct? This is what I've told, yes. Okay, but isn't it your prophet, he said, that Allah, he sent him the Quran in seven ways or seven letters? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what, is the, yeah. what is the reason, Muhammad, he, he claimed, what is the reason behind saving the Quran in seven ways or seven dialect? I don't know why. Because people cannot, cannot comprehend the Quran. So imagine you just said something. I find it very funny. I'm not making fun of you, but I'm making fun of Islam. That the Quran in Arabic is better. But as you see, the Quran in Arabic is worse because Allah, he need to write, rewrite the Quran seven times. In order to make sure, the sure. first Quran, in order, in order to make the first Quran clear. <laughs> but 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 you know as an Arab when you read it is it my friend he made it, it to the Arab my friend listen this Arab the seven Quran are in Arabic too right so Allah he needed to write his book seven times in order to make it clear and until now it's not clear so what kind of an author he made a book and the Muslim they say that the Quran is amazing it's amazing to the point we need to rewrite the book seven times in order to explain the book. And after writing the book seven times, nobody understands the book. <laughs> you, you see, you're referring to the transmitters, right? Warsh. Uh, I am not referring. Oh, no, I'm not Tell referring it. to any of this. You know, actually, even Muslim, they say those things that are different. But, you know, but just to show you how stupid this religion is. Mm. The Muslim they say to us that the 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 seven ways it just a uh, dialect like you know like you say the I say za or you know but it's not true as an example. No, it's not true. You're right. Yeah. So if you go in the Quran, where the verse says was shamsu tajrid mustaqarin laha. The sun run into its own course. Hmm. Uh, chapter 36 verse number 38 here in Arabic it says in English and the sun runs on what it is fixed course is that clear it runs right yeah the okay. sun runs on its fixed course let us go to Ibn Kathir And now you have the page from your side, you can open it. Yep. Let me just open my side. To make it easier for you to not to wait. So what was the verse again? Chapter 36, verse number 38. 36, 38, thank you. All right. Here it says, "Was laha," and the sun runs into a fixed course of uh, for a term, right? But in different, yeah, uh, but, but in different reading, it says, "Was la laha," the opposite meaning, totally. And the sun runs with no fixed course of term. <laughs> so, which one of them? One saying the sun run in a fixed uh, uh, course, and one saying the sun run with no fixed course. So this is not different uh, dialect. This is way. This is the opposite. 
We are not talking about the Fandir no more. Meaning that it has no destination. It does not sit in one place. Rather, it keeps moving night and day, never slowing down mm. or stopping. As I said, well, this is the opposite of the verse. The same verse in different recitation is totally the opposite. One says it runs. The other one says in, uh, the, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a station or that to rest. And the other one says it doesn't run to us. Uh, so how this is, can be a different reading? Are you showing both readings on the screen, sorry, or not? It's in the front of you, my friend. It says here. Here we go. Read it. I can see the one says, and the sun runs with no, no. fixed course for okay. No, read the first one. And You know, here we go. And its fixed course is beneath the throne of Allah. Here it's go down, it says. This is the verse, on its fixed course for term appointed between two bracket means it has appointed time and it will not go beyond that. Then if you go down, it says the opposite. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. Here, the sun runs with fixed course of a term. Which one of them? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's a problem. This is not a problem. This is a joke. There's no way God, he says this uh, both. And the Muslim, they witnessed that Muhammad, he said both. So Muhammad, he forgot what he said. He just add here, la. And that make it no. Here they forget the law. So when the Muhammadan they say, well, you know, different dialect does not mean different Quran, that's a lie. Because this is totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. So my friend, after all of this I showed you, isn't it this is enough for you? Be honest with me to leave Islam. You know, it's a tough thing to say. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter how tough it is. is isn't it more no. tough to be is to stay? With my respect to you, it will be more tough on you. You are smart. It's more. It's more tough on me to be called to call myself a Muslim when Islam is for for obviously for a stupid one. Which one is more tough to say? I today and decide to become smart. This is madness. This is stupid. This is can't be from God. I'm out of here. It is tough to say that, or it's more tough to say I'm going to stay Abdul. Following a madman, a stupid man, he says stupid things. Which one is more tough? Mm, okay. I, I agree. I agree. So did you, do you do you agree to leave Islam, my friend? Mm, yeah. I'm so happy for you. I praise the Lord that today you call me and you decide to leave Islam and you are free from the garbage of Muhammad. Now, as long as you decide to leave Islam, my duty as a Christian is to invite you to accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your Savior. What do you think about Christ? I've read the Bible um, before. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, I've studied it for a while, actually. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I find it difficult to believe, you know? Why it's difficult to believe? Do you believe, believe in what exactly? What is difficult? Okay. Um, okay. Let's start with the concept of... Okay. Jesus was not prophesied in the Old Testament. You see what I'm saying? Who said that? Uh, the Jews say that. No, that's not true. I've, I've read the Old Testament. Okay. Uh, I, I don't see Jesus. Well, you can go right now. You can type in uh, in Google. You, you do not need uh -huh. my help. Type yeah. prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. You will find at least 360 something prophecy about Jesus in the Old Testament. And some of them, they are extremely powerful. And as long you are saying, uh, the mm -hmm. Jews did not see that. So how the Jews, they are the one who welcome him in Jerusalem. They shout in his name. 
and why the believers, the first believers, who they are Jews, believe in him. If there's no prophecy about him. But they were a minority, right? Who said that? Who said so? Who said so? You guys say so. I mean, was no. he not crucified? They were it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The rabbis, they are the one in charge. Yeah. The rabbi isn't the one in charge. And they were able to make the crowd in that in that area follow them. And the Roman, he did what what uh, what, uh, what what the rabbi want. But you will notice in the same time that the Bible tells us that thousands of people believe in Jesus, and mm -hmm. thousands of people they listen to Jesus and they love what Jesus do. Actually, we have something that's called the 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 the, uh, the Palm Day, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, thousands yeah. of people they were welcoming him. You know, right? It was like a, a victorious person coming into the city. So obviously, there's a lot of people believe in him, and now the majority of the Jews are Christians, actually. You see, after 2,000 years, after Jesus, the Jews in this earth is not even 20 million. They are all nations that go in war, all nations get killed, you know, everybody. Uh, but the, the only faith is never increased, but only decrease is the Jews. Why? Because Christianity took most of them, and they become Christians. And as you know, Paul, he was a Jew, right? All disciples uh -huh. of Jesus, they were Jews. Even the Quran come from that. So when they say nobody believe in him, that's a lie. Secondly, imagine you are a person who was existing in the time of Jesus and you saw amazing miracles he can do, which nobody can do. Uh -huh. Why you will not believe a believer? Why somebody he can resurrect people from death? Nobody will believe that he is someone special. Why uh, somebody... you, you tell me this because, you know, the, the Jewish people, as you claim, they, they saw this, right? So why did they not believe in him? They did. They the did. rabbis, they no. did not believe in him. My friend, who said that the rabbis did not believe? There's many that they believe. But there is, the, there is, the, there is big names, let us say, who they want yeah. to lose their authority. You know, there's always, uh, you know, one day I was looking for a job. And mm -hmm. I apply even for a taxi driver. Imagine, I'm a person yeah. who has degrees. But because, you know, you need to pay for your food, right? And nothing wrong with working doesn't matter what the wrong or as long as it is uh, it's not hurting people you know taxi driver is fine i will work taxi driver so i applied the response is you are overqualified but i know why he refused me what you are overqualified i mean i'm going to, take, to drive a taxi what a big deal but the manager there he said to himself this guy he have a degree but that's my degree today we will get him inside the company tomorrow he will become the manager so there is always somebody is afraid you will take his place. So when the rabbi, they notice how Jesus be loved by the people, they felt the risk. They are losing their place. People don't listen to them. So they have to get rid of him. As simple as that. So when you say they did not believe in him, that is not really not true. Especially all the disciples are Jews. And the top of that, Jesus, he did miracles between the Jews and even between non-Jews, like the Aramaic people, who they are around. So, uh, belief is a matter of something personal. Mm -hmm. But the reason you gave me is not a reason. As an example, I will use your reasoning. So, how come the Jews or the majority did not believe according to you? Well, how come the Jews today, the majority, believe in him? So, if the, if the majority is the one who decides if you are right or wrong, well, the majority today are people believe in free sex, smoking, drinking, the majority, correct? No, no you see, the, the reason I asked this question wasn't because of this. It's because um, of two reasons. Um, I've heard that Christians um, often, and, and I have to be honest, I have to go back and, you know, read the Bible again. No because, problem. Um, you know, when I read it, I read it from a, you know, Muslim perspective. You know what I mean? I understand. Um, but, you know, when you guys talk about the Old Testament, like when I read the Old Testament, the New Testament, I would see the prophet in places he shouldn't have been in. You know what I mean? No, um, I don't know. This what you mean. Is why... Okay, so Christians often, you know, you guys say that um, Isaiah 53 5 hmm. is referring to Jesus, correct? Right. Um, but I was watching a, a video where a rabbi was uh, explaining that this isn't referring to Jesus, 
but it's talking about the the nature of the Israelites in general. We, we got uh, him. We got him busted. You can watch the same rabbi. I think you are talking about Tuiva Sengar. This guy's an idiot. You know, mm -hmm. we, we you know I I made videos about him, many videos, and everybody knows that this guy is a, is a is a is a liar. You know, as an example, this guy, uh, they ask him if Muhammad is a prophet or not because he's a hypocrite. Uh, yeah, uh, how come? Uh, how come you Jews? I made a video just uh, it's it's still in my channel actually. I did not delete it. You can watch it. Uh, how come the how come the Muslim they say that Jesus is the Christ? Remember the, the as you said, this guy he don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, correct? Yep, they okay. don't. So they ask him, how come Muhammad, he think that he is the Christ? He did not answer. He did not dare. And he starts saying, the Muslim, the believe in the different Messiah. He's the prophet for them. And it doesn't matter. It's not a question. The question is, is he a Messiah or not? And then he claimed that the Muslim do not believe that the Messiah is from David. But this is absolutely false. And we show the difference. So this guy is not a legitimate person even to listen to. Honesty is honesty. You see, when you talk to me, I don't take a side. I'm an American person. By having an American passport, I serve in the USA Army. If you ask me about Trump, I voted for him. I say he's dumb. If you ask me about Biden, I say he's stupid. I don't take a side. I say as it is. If somebody in my chat, he's an admin, he says something wrong, I am all over the place over him. So I don't take a side except the truth. So when those people, they say something, it's not even convincing to their own people, in case you do not know. You know, we believe that Israel, and maybe in 15, 20 years from now, they will have a huge number, you know, big number, which is going to change the format of Israel from this nation of the Jews to be the nation of the Christians. The Jews are coming to Christ in a huge number. And those what Jews. What do you mean now or back in the Now days? and before. Now is even more. You know, if you go right now and see how many Christian schools open all over Jerusalem, how many, you will not believe it. Uh, and who is the teacher? He is an ex Jew. Who is the minister? He is an ex Jew. Who is the doctor? Who is the professor? Ex Jew. So they are afraid from Christianity, but they are not afraid of Islam because uh, Islam is not convincing to the Jews. Islam obviously hate the Jews. Christians, they are the only one who say we love the Jews. We don't hate them. So Christianity is very attractive to the Jews. Islam is not. So the Jews, like this rabbi, they made Christianity number one enemy to them, but they fail miserably to convince anyone. And you can watch their videos and watch my video, and you will see that this guy, he come with stupid things, which is not a true. As an example, when the, when the Old Testament says that the virgin will give birth, this guy, he says, the, the translation of the Christian is false. It says a young woman will give birth. But this is stupid because if, if the sign is, it's a sign. If the sign is a young woman give birth, well, hey, all young women, they give birth. <laughs> there's, there's millions of them every day. So uh, well, where is this prophecy? Where's the reference? I made a video about it. You can go watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. so, okay, I'll check out. Uh, uh, yeah, so so when uh, uh, when when he say that the Messiah uh, uh, or the Christian they say that the uh, a young woman she will give birth, when in fact it is it says a virgin because it's a miracle you know not every woman can do if I everyone if women they can do that that's mean all women can do that this is this is not a sign this is not a miracle so he lie and they lie. Uh, when they say it is not a virgin, if it's a young woman, that is actually even against the Bible. Why? Because how God he claimed that I'm going to give you a sign, which is a miracle, and the sign is a young woman she will give birth. No, and but then, that wouldn't make sense. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he lied about it because that will not be a miracle and that will not be a sign. My mother, she gave birth, she was young. <laughs> she must be Mary then, you know? And I must be the, I must be the Messiah then. So this is stupid. So, uh, 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 you know, when those people, they try to refute, they are bankrupt. The same as the Muslim, they try to refute us. I don't see really any different. You know, if, if you, if you want to go, you try, try always to find how much legitimate is what they are saying. You know? Just think about it. Don't listen to the Christian. Don't listen to the Muslim. Don't take a side. 
don't listen to the Jews, just think carefully and you investigate, you go search, you know, the Hebrew is there, the dictionary is there, you open the dictionary, you read it. And then if the word, if the word mean uh, 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 what they say, that's mean they are right. And the Christians are lying. If not, then the Christians is right. No, that's fair. Okay, I... You see, my friend, everything I, I was with you, I showed you reference one by one. Yeah. Right? So when the Jews, when a Jewish rabbi, he says like in Isaiah 7, that this is not about Mary, she is being a virgin, we laugh because that will destroy even the verse meaning. For God, he will not make you promise that a young woman will give birth, for that will go to a million of women, and then how we will know who is the Messiah. It have to be an amazing miracle. Something never happened before. Or there's only one Messiah. There's no two Messiah. There's no three Messiah. There's no four Messiah. So if it's not about a, uh, not about a virgin, it's about a young woman. There's, then there's no prophecy, and there's nothing said there. For all Tell young me. women, any woman, she is young, you know. Mm -hmm. And the word young is very flexible. You know what I mean? No, I mean I, I agree with the explanation. It would it make sense? Um... But okay, I need to, um, I can't make a decision on this now, as you can imagine. No, my, my friend, that's okay. Well, I, for me, I, I, I do my best to invite you. Feel free mm -hmm. to, to communicate with me if you like to go. To go, if, uh, go read the Bible and, uh, you know, you can call me anytime you wish. I'm so happy for you now that you decide to leave Islam and you are free from Muhammad and his madness. Can you just clarify one thing, sorry, for me? Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> Okay, you know, in Islam, we have the, they have the five pillars, right? They have what? So Muslims, Muslims have the five pillars, right? Uh, Shahada, Salah, Zakat, Sum, Hajj. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, they pray five times a day. Do you guys as Christians have an equivalent for these things? You know, first of all, you cannot limit believing in God in one, two, three, four. That is a false uh, teaching. And I will tell you why. Because the Bible, you know, like when, when, when they asked Jesus about uh, God, about, uh, you know, he said to them, to wish to others what you wish to yourself, that is the book. That is the book. That's the law. So it's not one, two, three, four. It is if you are really being as God he wanted you to be or not. So one, two, three, four does not make any difference for me. If I follow all those steps like the Jewish rabbis, who they are so conservative, they don't touch a food if touched by a human being other than the Jews. They don't touch a food if it's touched by a woman. She has menstruation. They are very, 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 very strict in many things, but all of them, they are silly. And Jesus, he described them. He says, well, you know what? If the cup inside is so dirty, you, you, you swallow it, you drink it, no problem. But if little thing outside of the cup, you complain about it. So we don't want to be like the Muslims who follow point one, point two, point three. We follow the Holy God. And the Bible says, be holy like your father. So when you are working in that direction, you are following all the point, not point two, not point one, not point three. He is holy. You are ordered to be holy, which means you are not perfect. You commit sin. But you fight hard in a, in, a, in, a, in a direction to be holy like your father. And this is what Jesus is about. Whoever believe in me and I will live. Believe in me mean anything Jesus said, anything Jesus did, anything Jesus he wanted us to be. Not point one, not point three. You know, Islam is a stupid religion. You say Shahada, you are saved. That's stupid. That's why Jesus, he said the opposite. He said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you can say Shahada as much as you want. You can repeat things as much as you want. And actually, Jesus, he said to us clearly, don't pray like those hypocrites who repeat words, and they like to pray in the corners. So we do not need to pray in the corner. Go and go to your closet and pray in the closet, so nobody will see you except your father in heaven. So Jesus, he forbid us from being hypocrite. Jesus, he forbid us from being following Shahada. He ordered us to walk his step, not to say words. 
But did Jesus say what you just said at the end? You know about don't don't pray like you know um, showing off. Did, did he say this? Because this is a very good teaching. Yeah, you know like don't, uh, 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 you know don't pray in the corner. Don't play. You know like uh, uh, let me let me pull the verse for you. Uh, uh, please, because hmm. this is what we what they do. You know what I mean? Like you know a Muslim once asked me. Why you yeah. don't see you, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, why well, you never said I'm going to go to pray, you know? And if you uh -huh. go right now, you know, you see my, all my videos, I never said I'm going to go to pray, like, but do Christian really pray or not? You know, does that mean Christian they don't pray? We pray, but we are forbidden from bragging about it because simply those who do that, they are the hypocrite. They want to show the people that they are praying to God. I'm going to play for you Matthew chapter 6 mm. so you can learn from Jesus who is Jesus not from me I mean who can because teach it takes a, who, who, sorry it takes a long time so what, what is no, it from Matthew no Matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6 you know and I don't know if the sound will come to you now if I play it let me know if uh, if the sound is coming to you Matthew 6 do you hear the sound or take not? heed that ye do not your alms before no, men no, to okay do this my, my friend uh, uh, a mute Skype, mute Skype, yep. just for you know, uh, uh, and watch the chat. And when people they say to you, unmute. Uh, actually, when 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 the sound of the Bible uh, stop, unmute, and you will be talking to me. So uh, okay. uh, mute Skype and uh, uh, unmute you too, so you can hear it. And we will play Matthew chapter six. Be seen of them; otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms. Do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. We'll stop here. You will notice right away that this is the opposite of the teaching of Muhammad. One hundred percent. They love to pray in the corners. They love to show themselves. They even put a rag on the top of a car. They go and they pray in the middle of the square. I remember when I was a kid, I visited a Muslim child in my age. Uh -huh. When I go to his house in the cold winter, his father, he opened all the windows. So the neighbors will see through the balcony that he is praying. And I say to the kid, why your father opened the windows? You know, so cold. And then I learned from this kid a lot, a lot of tricks. The Muslim they do. In the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. uh, when we, we, we go to his house, we eat cookies. You know, we are kids. We eat cookies. Uh, we drink tea, you know, uh, yeah. and then now we want to leave. And then he says, stop, stop, stop. 
and he grabbed some salt and he put it in his in hole on his lips. So why you do that? He could not answer because if he move, if he talk, the the salt will fall down from his lips. And then I ask him what he do. He says because now people will see that we have, uh, uh, you know, we were e eating and our our lips is not dry. <coughs> so put salt. So nobody will know that your lips will be dry and people will think you're fasting. I said, how do you know that? He said, my dad, he do it. My mom, she do it. The whole family do it. You know, <laughs> once I, his father was sitting in the couch, he was hitting his head with a rock, little rock. I was, this is really crazy. Why he's hitting his head with a little rock, little tiny rock. Mm -hmm. And that caused a dark spot in his head. Uh, so it looks like he prays a lot. <laughs> uh, so I asked him why he's doing that. Well, I'm just a kid learning, you know. Uh, yeah. So he said, so people will think that he is, uh, you know, this is to leave a mark in his head. So that, you know, like supposed to he pray a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay, brother, listen, I, <clears throat> I really appreciate the, the time. Um, and thank you for, for showing me what you showed me. I think it's very clear now. Uh, in fact, to be honest, I was told um, not to call you specifically um, because apparently um, you are one of the Dajjals, you know. So it was a pleasure to speak to you anyways. So they, they, they said to you, I'm one of the liars, right? Yep. Mm. One and, of the fitna for the Ummah. And does it, does it turn to be this way? Did I lie to you about anything or everything I, I said I showed reference and proof? Improve. You, you did, you did, and and yeah, they were the liars, you know. So yeah, it's very unfortunate. But thank you very much, Rita. Well, my really friend, I'm happy to have you here, and I hope you can. Uh, if you know a sheikh, if you know anyone, he would like to call me, so you can watch and see what will happen. You know, feel free. Mm. No worries. Thank you very much. Have a nice. Thank you. Time. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, let us pray for this gentleman, you know, that he will accept the salvation of Christ and uh, he will turn to the truth and the truth will set him free. He is now free from Islam, but still he needs salvation. And for me, I do my best. People, they have a choice. People, they can accept. People, they can reject. This is their business. But as you see, everything we say, we show the proof. We make the Muslims read it. We don't make speeches. Everything we mention is from their books. I think I will <laughs> I will stop for today. <coughs> my 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 throat. Hold on. You know, I was drinking coffee too much, and that's what happened to me when I drink too much coffee. I love coffee, uh, <clears throat> but sometimes it's not good. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop here today before I lose my voice, and I'm very happy for our friend. Um, I did not really ask him his name, but anyway, whatever his name is, uh, we are happy for him that he left uh, Islam. And uh, let us see how many Muslims will leave Islam today after watching this video. What do you think? How many? How many? A per, how many person? They are decent. They will see the reference which we show on the screen. They will examine the reference. I encourage all the Muslims to examine the reference. Whatever we show you, whatever we give you, it have to be an Islamic website, it have to be Islamic books, it have to be Islamic reference, it have to be Islamic interpretation, not ours. Examine, my friend, and then you will see. Can I talk to you? I'm a Muslim, my friend. Learn Islam, no problem. Uh, but maybe not today. You want to call me next time I go live on air? Hmm? I will take one more call. Let us see. But my voice is gone, honestly. <coughs> Hello?
Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Are you a Muslim? Uh, sorry, I already spoke. Sorry? Sorry, I already spoken to you. Oh, you spoke to me before? Sorry, I don't remember. Okay, so you are a Muslim or not now? No, 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 sorry, we just spoke. I, I've left the religion. I literally just spoke to you right now. Oh, you are that person who spoke to me right now. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you I, see, I, for I just, me, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't look really about who is calling, who is talking. You know, I mean, that's why I said I don't know his name. Because I, I I forgot to look at uh, the name on the Skype. All right, what do you want to say, uh, my friend? No, no, I just texted you to say please don't use my name. That's oh, okay, all right, no problem. You see, your name is uh, your name is in preserve, and uh, this is your life, my friend. I respect that. Thank you for calling again. And Thank remember, I want you to go and read Matthew chapter six again. Take your time and look at the wisdom of Jesus. Amazing teaching, and look at the garbage in the Quran. <laughs> and then you decide which one is really a person he can he can make a better person of you you know it's yeah. up to you okay I, I won't look at that book anymore but I, I will check out the Bible all right take care my friend Thank God you. bless you take care all right and please pray for our friend here he asked me not to mention his name oh ah. <clears throat> I will respect that I thought this is a new Muslim trying to call or something you know uh, but he's the same person uh, so anyway, uh, obviously he's using his real name. Uh, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? All right. So thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope today we have a very good time sharing the truth, giving education. And remember... Uh, we are not here, you know, we don't hate Muslims and we will never hate them. As you see, if you hate them, you will never win souls and you will not save them. We save Muslims because we love to save them. We believe they deserve to be in the kingdom of the Lord. We believe that the Muslim don't deserve to go to hell. And those who you want to save them is not the one you hate them. The one you hate them is the last one to think about saving them. So Muslim, they might think that Christian prince, he hate them. Well, this is what they lie to you. The Quran says that, that the Christian, they hate the Muslims, the Jews hate the Muslims. But in reality, is the opposite. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. God, he loved the world. Hey, everybody. White, black, Asian, Whatever your ethnic, whatever your language, whoever you are, you are a child of God. And we are the only one who believe that God, our Father, is our Father. And here you see how our Lord, how humble He is, that He is God who created this massive universe. Yet, He is willing to give us a name we don't deserve. You are a child of God. You pray to God, you say, my father, our father. How beautiful it is. While the Muslim is a slave of Allah, Christian, every Christian of us, women or man, is a child of God. You are black African, you are Asian, you are white, it doesn't matter. The Bible says there's no Greek, there's no Hebrew, there's no free, there's no slave, for all is one by Jesus. I mean to that. So we pray that more Muslims will come to Christ and more Muslims will see the truth and the truth will set them free. Uh, they expose the lies of Muhammad and learn how to be tough on this cult. And tough mean to be bold, to say it as it is, not as they want, not politically correct. Being politically, politically correct is an illness, is a weakness. If somebody is hiding something, they've been forced to say something. So if you are a Christian, Say things as it is.
Yes, we love the Muslims. It doesn't mean we will let the Muslims die and go to hell. Loving the Muslims is saving the Muslims. It's not the opposite. So when somebody, he says to you, uh, that you are speaking your root, this is not how a Christian should be speaking. A true Christian is the one who say things as it is, and that will make it true for sure.